good people and today I'm going to talk more about shooting in NBA 2K21 and discuss a few more things I didn't go over in my initial shooting video that if you haven't seen you can find down below. As I also go over how to change the shot meter in 2K21, what's the best setup to shoot and what it can mean for you. And if you like the content make sure to subscribe to the channel to help us grow this thing together. I'm Chris from Sports Gamers Online and alright let's get it. First off, if you're not already, it's time to get familiar with the options you have at your disposal to fine tune the shooting the best match which you're most comfortable with. Now if you go to options and then settings, here at least for the purposes of this video you want your shot feedback set to all shots. Okay now backing out of that screen if you go to controller settings this is where you can alter how you view the new shot meters and decide just how much shot stick aiming you want all up in your 2K21 experience. And the three options we are going to focus on is shot meter, shot timing, and shot aiming. In 2K21, there are two ways to shoot. By default, it's timing your shot with the button, and now aiming, which you do by pulling the right stick down. Now, the latter type of shooting hasn't been too popular so far, and this is where we'll be able to alter the degree that we want aiming to infiltrate into our gameplay. But according to gameplay director Mike Wang, the three most optimal ways aka received the biggest boost to shooting, two out of the three heavily involved the right stick, so what's up? The biggest boost you will receive is using shot stick aiming, which again is holding the right stick down, then tapping the left or right trigger before you release the ball, which locks your meter and prevents it from moving anywhere. And doing this at the optimal point in your jumper is what you want to strive for. So pretend this is 2K20 for a moment and you don't have your meter on. You will want to hit the left or right trigger about the same time you would have released the shoot button in 2K20 to get the biggest boost. Now the second best is using the shot stick without using the left or right trigger. So simply flicking the right stick down and trying your best to aim. And then what was the best way to play in 2K20 is third this year and that's playing with the shot meter off which will ignore the new shot stick aiming system and revert back to shooting being purely timing based whether you use the button or right stick. With the timing shot meter a way to adjust to the shot meter shooting jumpers has been the increased use of off balance shots as it slows the meter down for you as your player loads up to shoot. With shot stick aiming which is pulling down on the right stick it's important to remember that you don't have to time it. You can keep the stick held the entire time or let it go as soon as you flick the right stick down and you will receive no penalty. So that's great. But you do get a boost if you aim and time your jumper by again aiming with the right stick as usual. And like I mentioned earlier, locking in your shot at the optimal time by pressing left or the right trigger. I prefer the right trigger because it feels easier in my hands, but it's totally up to you. Another note that has helped me so far, I'm finding myself using the right stick shoot mainly on catch and shoot chances. Because my dudes are wide open, I want the best possible chance to hit these, right? And the right stick is the way to do so. You have to get used to looking above the player's head before the meter appears though, so you can quickly determine where the yellow bar is and where your tick is in relation to it. It also has helped me realize earlier if my tick is already dead center inside the meter, so I don't have to move my right stick just to move it. And when I notice that, I tap the right trigger and it's money. Now I mentioned earlier if you're not a huge fan of shot meters here you can turn it completely off which will automatically cancel shot aiming because you need to see the meter to aim and this solely relies on timing your jump shot like before giving you a similar boost if you time your jumper correctly like it did in 2K20. And new to 2K21 you can keep your shot meter on for just your free throws where you will see the slingshot meter if you press the button and the aiming system if you hold the right stick down. Next is shot timing which is strictly offline, which by default only shows up if you press square or X on your controller to shoot. You know the slingshot looking meter which as far as having your meter on is the easier of the two, but shot aiming will again offer the most benefit if you learn it. Now you can use shot timing for shots only which means all jump shots, so if you go for a layup with the right stick in any direction or with square or X on your controller you will get an NA at the top of your screen if you have your shot feedback on which will ignore the timing of the shot and refer to the real player's ratings and how weak or strong he's able to finish at the rim. So you don't have to worry about letting go of the stick or button at a specific point to finish, it will solely depend on that player's rating. 
Real player percentage stretches the benefit for some players at least of not having to time layups and using their actual ratings out to jumpers as well. So you see now all my jump shots have NA also. This will benefit your better shooters and definitely punish your shooting handicap guys when there's nothing you can do to make the guy shoot better. And shots and layups gives the user full responsibility for your success and failures when you shoot with the square or X button. And lastly, here you can mess with shot aiming, which triggers by aiming the right stick down. Now, thankfully, you aren't forced into using this if you don't want to, but again, receive the biggest shooting boost if you could implement it into your game. Your options are to go with shots and layups, which has you deal with the aiming system that forces you to center your right stick inside the bar when you go for jumpers and attempting to lay it up. Then there's shots only, which cause you to only use the aiming system on jump shots. So if you go for a layup with X or square, the slingshot meter will appear and the same if you attempt a layup with the right stick. And also on your floaters if you aim the right stick down while driving close to the rim, as that's not considered a jump shot at that point. And then there's the ability to completely turn it off. <laughs> so with the meter off, if you attempt a shot aiming the right stick down, you will be given the other shot meter. The only thing is it doesn't completely revert everything back to 2K20 where you're able to shoot with the right stick in any direction. You still have to aim down on your stick. But when you do, and whenever you go for layers, you will not have to deal with aiming with the right stick anymore. So this is specifically for the people who, when they first heard the news of the shot aiming system, were like, no. Don't change what wasn't broken, so you guys can completely turn it off and get to work. Which if you're going to turn off the shot aiming, you might as well go no shot meter as well to still receive a boost on your shooting. So with that, tell me down below, how have you been shooting jumpers and layups so far in NBA 2K21? Are you a button player? Do you love the right stick? Let me know your opinion. The best badges that seem to work the best with, especially the right stick aiming, and still hit despite not getting center aim so far has been Green Machine, Hot Zone Hunter, and Catch and Shoot. All my best shooters in my team have these badges on at least silver, so I ended up putting it on my my player, and my shooting percentage has definitely increased because of it. I've heard on Twitter Steady Shooter has been pretty good, so I might try that soon. But like many figures, having badges is required to be able to shoot like your Steph Curry in this game now. You will not have success if you have no badges. Or the right badges, I should say. And again, for those that have been using the right stick to shoot and lay up, how's your experience been so far? Do you feel it's worth it to get the hang of it? Or have you given up or about to? Let me know what's up. And if you like the content we provide, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Sports Gamers Online, thank you all for watching, and be good, y'all.